Welcome back everyone, I'm the Depressed Dior and this is Battlestar Galactica on Tabletop Simulator. As always, if I make any mistakes, uh, I apologize. There's, I'm playing literally four characters at once and this game is a little bit complicated. Not as complicated as maybe some people may say, but there's still a lot to keep track of. Anyway, uh, with that being said, uh, I think my ships are not flipped over anymore, so that's a plus. Uh, it is now Boomer's turn. I need to draw cards for her. To piloting. Wait, what did I just do? These are not the right ones. <laughs> there we go. That's what it should have been. Alright. So as you can see, I'm a little bit tired. Um, I'm trying to get this all done in one sitting, which is probably not the best uh, of ideas. Alright. So, let's go ahead and uh, do what we can here. Uh, two people are in the brig right now. One of them is a suspected Cylon, though it's probably pretty obvious at this point. Um, we have our FTLs damaged, uh, but that's not the end of the world. Executive order should have been discarded a while ago. Um, and yeah, we got we got stuff to do. Actually, okay, yeah. I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. We did use one of our nukes, so that's fine. Uh, we're not going to move anywhere. We're kind of okay where we're at. Um, all right. So if, I'm going to I'm going to stay where I'm at. I don't think there's any cards I want to use right now. There are. I mean, I have maximum firepower. That's a good one. Okay. So first things first. Uh, we'll do our CAC action. Uh, we're going to activate this Viper here and use it to attack that Heavy Raider. Don't think anyone has anything to help with that, that they that would actually help with it. So, uh, 7 and 8 would destroy a Heavy Raider. Uh, for those who are wondering where I'm getting these numbers from, it's um, in the rule books essentially. Uh, the uh, each of the rule books will, if they change anything, they'll include a new chart. And essentially, I believe Daybreak has the entire summary of everything as far as combat's concerned. Seven. So that heavy raider's gone. So that's good. Last thing we need is to get. It's bad enough to have a uh, heavy raider board as a centurion. It's even worse when two do it. <laughs> so, all right. And then I get another action because of CAG. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do maximum firepower. I'm not going to take any risk here. I need to take this heavy raider out now. Like, even if we, even if we were to, you know, jump right now, it. The Heavy Raider will be waiting for us on the Silent Fleet board, and all it would take is just a move to kind of jump right in there. So, four attacks, and we're looking for a seven or an eight. Miss. 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 Hit. All right, that was a good investment then. All right. Um, so those are been, been used. Um, not much else to play around with here. Okay, so at this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a... Let me check something here. Okay, yeah, it's all fine. All right, it's a crisis. President chooses. Uh, unfortunately, the president is currently Laura Rosalind. Um, and she can either go minus one food and discard cards and make the pl current player discard cards, which can have a... It could be a detrimental effect, but I think what she's going to go for is minus food. Because we're at five food now, so she's going to go minus two food. And break it down to three. We're currently at five distance, by the way, so we have a ways to go. Um, raiders are going to go ahead and activate. This raider's going to move in and see the cornucopia of uh, of uh, civvy ships that are waiting for it. Uh, I do have one viper back here, so it'll attack that first. Um, and then we get a jump prep. So that's taken care of. Alright, so that's been resolved. Uh, next turn goes to uh, Louis here. He does still have his once per game ability. Um, and so does uh, so does uh, Chief. So, um, alright, so let's draw our cards first. Uh, you know, we need to shuffle the engineering deck again. Uh, he's currently in the brig, so his options of what he can do is actually kind of limited. Tactics. One, a two. 
and two leadership. Okay, so we got an XO, so that's good. Uh, anything to play with? So some of these cards are pretty interesting, like this one allows you to activate locations that are, even if they're damaged. So that's a way to get around a damaged location. Um, he is currently locked away. Uh, that's not going to help us. We could potentially get back morale. But that's not going to really help us too much. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and XO. And the person we're going to XO with, uh, okay, the, the, the maintenance engineer thing only works on his turn, so that's not going to help too much. Yeah, I think what we're going to end up doing is um, we're going to XO Boomer and uh, have her just go all in. Um, so she can move an attack or just move, or sorry, she can either take two actions or um, a move and an action. Um, so what she's going to go ahead and do is, uh, I mean, she can go after the base draw, but that's not really worth it. So we're just going to move back here. And then she's going to go ahead and use her CAG action to go ahead and activate the Unmanned Raider, or Unmanned Viper, um, to attack the Raider that's in that same sector. All right, that's a hit, so that destroys that Raider. So we've kind of cleared out this issue, which is good. Um, and then she still has another action to play around with. Um, she's going to go ahead and try to get some of these civvy ships out of here. Alright, uh, that resolves that. He is currently in the brig, so there's not going to be a crisis. Uh, but he does need a discard. I'll discard all hands on deck. Okay, uh, turn goes to Laura Rosalind. Uh, she can draw some cards. Okay. So that's what she was waiting for. Is this uh, six is the highest strength card uh, of any color, and it uh, generally has the most strongest. It has the strongest uh, special ability usually. So this is politics. Uh, what you can do with this thing is a number of things. Um, you can. Essentially, any skill check that's uh, that's triggered on a location, um, you, can play, you can play that card to automatically pass or fail it. So that includes getting out of the brig, throwing someone in the brig, or executing them. Right now, she wants to get out of the brig. Because if she does that, she can start influencing uh, influence things a lot more. So she's going to go ahead and do political prowess and get herself out, out of here. Uh, she can go to any location she wants. Uh, I mean, she could try to do an airlock. That'd be pretty hard to pull off. Any other locations she could play with? Uh, I mean, she could play around with communications. But for the most part, throwing people on the brig might be easier, but it's actually not a skill she's good at. So you know what? Yeah, she'll go ahead and move to the airlock. She will have to discard a car, but that's not really an issue for her. Um, she'll discard red tape. Okay. Um, since she is out of the brig, she can now draw two crisis cards. And pick one. She'll pick food shortage. So yeah, they should have really executed her when they had the chance. Food shortage. She picks, she's currently still the president, so she'll pick minus two food, bringing it down to one. And raiders will activate. Move this one down. And a jump will happen. All right, um, Boomer will return to the, uh, the hangar deck. 
all these will return to reserves. This single raider will go to the back here. This oh, I didn't see this raider here. I missed this raider this entire time. Um, it would have went here, then here. So that should be corrected. I don't know how long that raider's been there. Uh, I'm just going to go with that. Gray on gray, of course. Honestly, it doesn't really give the humans much of an advantage. They're kind of in trouble anyway. Um, so, with that all said and done, let's go ahead and uh, draw two destination cards. It's going to go to Admiral, Bo Admiral Cag Boomer, Gas Cloud, and Nebula. Currently, we are at five distance. This is three distance, and after reset the jump track uh, preparation track, you advance the jump preparation track by two. This other one is it's just one distance, but you get to kind of manipulate the crisis deck. She's going to go ahead and uh, put her put her put the humans at eight distance, and then this gets moved up two spaces. So we got something there. It's not much, but we got something. All right, uh, with that resolved, let's go ahead and discard. Uh, we do not need these executive orders. Uh, we need to discard one more thing. We'll discard. We'll discard that. All right, 10 cards. Uh, it goes to uh, Chief. So at this point, it's uh, it's kind of hard of the cards at this point. It's going to get pretty ugly. But, like, despite how bad things got, like literally losing four food, uh, getting that three distance puts puts humans literally, all they have to do is jump once. They don't have, they can even run out of resources due to the jump, and they will still win. Um Meanwhile, if they hit any if any of their resources hit zero, which in this case their most threatening one is food, which by the way, there's at least one of these uh, civvy ships that has food in it. Um, also, there might be food as a damage token. Uh, so, yeah, it's a uh, it's neck and neck. Like despite the holding order and stuff, things kind of just fell through at that point. So anyway, it goes to uh, Chief's turn. So what Chief's going to do is he's going to go ahead and draw his politics. Draws two leadership. Uh, fortunately, he did not get uh, any XOs. Two engineering. Finally, he's getting some. Oh, finally, he got a repair. Freaking a. He's he's the chief of like engineering. Like literally, that is his position in this story. And I was, um, and he's still just yeah. Anyway, with that, um, he's going to go ahead and move to FTL control. He's going to go ahead and use repair to repair it. Okay, so it's been repaired. Now, make sure this is shuffled this time. All right. Now, next thing is he needs to, he gets another action because he just used a repair. Um, he can't activate it. Um, we're, we have to be in blue in order to do it. So at this point, he needs to do another action. And he doesn't have any other actions he really want to do besides um, consolidate power. So he's going to consolidate power. And he's going to get himself what could help. Uh, just get more tactics. Or sorry, leadership. Okay. So yeah, consolidate power just allows him to draw two cards of any type. It can be outside his skill set. All right. And it comes down to this. Um, if this is something that reduces food, it's going to be game over. President chooses, and unfortunately, she is still technically a president, even though everyone pretty much knows she's a freaking Cylon. She hasn't revealed yet, so she's still technically president. Um, so she gets the pick. She can either do minus two morale, which will bring it pretty dangerously low, or oh, also I forgot to freaking do the fuel. 
Uh, should have been minus four fuel. So brings it down to five. Okay. And then, um, but what she really wants is the force jump prep back and minus one fuel. All right. Um, and then we need to roll 1d8. Uh, base star is going to be added to number five. This is going to go up by one. Sevy ship needs to be placed. It's going to be placed here. Um, CAC, pick, CAC can place where it uh, choose where it goes, but it has to go to a place that doesn't have ships, or doesn't have Sevy ships rather. All right, and that is it. All right, so now they're even in they're in even more trouble than they were before. All right, so goes to Boomer. Uh, yeah, you're fine on cards. Okay, um, one blue, two red. Uh, two purple. And here we are. So we got a few options. Uh, we do have an executive order. And we can ask Louis if he has anything he wants to do. Any undamaged locations? Yeah. Um, all right, so what she's going to go ahead and do, she's going to go ahead and do critical situation. So she has two actions now, instead of just a move and an action. So that's going to activate. She's going to go ahead and deploy in a Viper, like so. For some reason, these things are always upside down. All right. Uh, she gets another action because of the hangar deck. So she's still at two. She's going to go ahead and CAG action and deploy another Viper. She still has another action, so she still has two. Uh, her next action is to go ahead and... Let's control communications. Uh, what she's going to go ahead and do is play unorthodox plan. Um, she can activate any location, uh, armory, weapons control, and communications, or command. Um, she's going to go ahead and activate command and move this viper back, and then escort a ship away. Okay, she still has one action that takes care of the move that bonus action now. She still has one action left. Um, she's going to use that one action to nuke all the civvies. Now she's going to go ahead and use it to XO Louis. So Louis in the brig right now. He can have he can he can't really move. So he's got two actions. Um, his first action is he's going to Trying to think here. Can you do it? Can you pull? Can you get enough numbers? Because it's twelve, and she's not in the brig, so it's so. If it was, in, if you, if you try to airlock someone that's in the brig, it, the difficulty is only eight. Also, this is one of the few skill checks where um, treachery is actually positive. So something to note. Okay, so what he's going to do is he's going to do his once per game. He's going to use it. He can activate any three undamaged locations regardless of where where you are. So even while on the brig, he can activate some things. So first thing he's going to activate is the airlock. Um, now, the way Reckless works is it's in, it's going to be based off the order, um, the order similar, similar to like a crisis. So you start by the next person over. So Rosalind is going to go ahead and prevent someone from using a Reckless card and play her Reckless card first. 
So what this is going to do is each human player with four or less skill cards may draw two skill cards. No one has that. So all this is going to do is it's just going to tr trigger the Reckless. This is a zero cost, so it's going to activate along with this card. So Civvy Ship gets put in the back. And uh, two Treachery cards are added to the Destiny deck. Alright, not much we can do about that. But the good news is those Treachery cards will actually probably be helpful. Alright, so Reckless has been done. Um, we're going to go ahead and play... Now this isn't a Reckless card. Uh, Chief is going to go ahead and play Scientific Research. Engineering car cards for this skill check now count as positive instead of negative. Alright. And Boomer is kind of doing her thing. She's got nothing she wants to add to this. At least not yet. Alright. So with that said and done, um, it's going to go Rosalind first. Uh, unfortunately, she doesn't really have any cards she can throw in here. Yeah, anything she puts in there would actually help get her killed. Because um, it's yellow, treachery, and then iron will just wouldn't do anything. Alright. Uh, that being said, it's going to be Chief next. Uh, Chief is going to go ahead and put in... Oh, also, we need to add two cards from the Destiny deck here. Yes, yeah, so you do it for normal skill checks, too. Alright. Uh, he'll put scientific research in because that's positive now. Uh, Boomer is going to throw everything she's got. Everything. And then um, Louis can only put one card in because he's in the brig. Since uh, since uh, blues are positive, he'll go ahead and put one in there as, as well. Alright, uh, with that, we'll go ahead and shuffle it. And uh, we're not going to worry about the Reckless anymore, but we'll worry about this effect. Draw a card. Alright, so plus five. Alright, so this is going to double all um, engineering skills. So, well, so right now it's 10, 12, 13, uh, 17, 18, 20, 24, 25, quick thinking, uh, 35, which is I think a new record for overkill. So 35 is way above 12, and Rosalind's going to uh, be executed. So when someone's executed, uh, they get to they reveal their all of their uh, loyalty cards. So she'll reveal his not or not a Cylon and then the Cylon card. If you execute a human like someone that has nothing but you are not a Cylon cards, uh, you would actually lose morale because you just executed an innocent person. But in this case, she killed a Cylon, so she reveals those. Um, since she got executed, um, she loses all of her cards. She has to discard all of them. Usually you would discard down to three, but in this case she got executed. Uh, the other thing, uh, usually if you r reveal yourself as a Cylon, you would get a Super Crisis, uh, which are like really like evil uh, <laughs> crises that, that the, uh, the Cylon player can play. Uh, but since she got executed, she doesn't get one. Uh, the Presidency, by the way, uh, goes to uh, whoever's next in line, which I think is Chief. I'm pretty sure it's Chief. Fairly certain it's Chief, but I'll check. Uh, yeah, it's Chief. So this will go to Chief. So he's president again. Um, and then with all that said and done, um, she goes to the resurrection ship. And at this point, she plays by slightly different rules. Not that that matters too much. All right. But the good news is that's been taken care of. Uh, we're still not done with uh, Louis's um, uh, once per game, though. He can activate two more locations. Oh, actually, we're still not done with a lot of things. Um, the quick thinking uh, triggered, and he can actually return a card to his hand. Um, 
he'll take the guts and initiative. All right. And then the rest of this gets discarded. Yeah, so this was mega overkill, but it was it was a surefire way to ensure that Rosalind could no longer make calls. I mean, honestly, it wasn't even the quorum cards that was the problem. It's the fact she was able to make decide the fates of certain crises, like, you know, food. And, all right, so, uh, uh, that needs to go, to go away. Okay, so yeah, um, thank you, scientific research. Uh, they burned a lot of cards, um, and now uh, they have two more activations. Um, and it has to be different locations, so he can't he can't just execute everybody. Um, so his other two locations he wants to do. He's going to go ahead and activate command and escort um, to the civvy ships back. Finally, have at least a deck of of them. Um, he gets one. He has one more he can do. Um, he's gonna go ahead and he's kind of got a full. He's got a full card hand right now, so he doesn't really need to mess with those at all. Um, has to be different locations. Um, so he can do communications. Yeah, he can do communications, and that's about it. I mean, he can try to get some more skill cards, and that's a yeah. So what he's gonna do instead? He's gonna do communications. He's going to take a look at two civilian ships, and then he can move them to an adjacent area. So this one has population. This one has population and fuel. So pretty safe ones. He's going to move them both down, kind of spread out the spread the love a little bit. All right. So he is so with that uh, once per game ability, he activated the airlock, command, and communications. So that's been resolved. So he's. Um, I believe everyone has used their once per game except for Chief. All right, next. Um, he has one more action left because of the XL. He's going to use that one action to go ahead and do test the limits. Test the limits. If the fleet marker is not on a blue space, you can increase the jump preparation track by one. And then he rolls a die, and if it's five or lower, damage to Galactica. Um, he's going to go ahead and do strategic planning with that. So he gets plus two on this result. All right, that's still a damage. Um, even, yeah. So we've already shuffled it. And it was food. <laughs> All right. So that's game over. He hits, they, essentially they ran out of food and starved. Um, that was unfortunate. Um, the next crisis would have been a... Highest line of succession. Would have given a jump prep. Uh, he's still in jail. I would have hit her turn next. She could have looked at the next two. And then the next one would have been. Yeah. Um, Because then I would have been gone to that. Yeah. So if he hadn't have done it, um, he would. They would have gotten enough jump prep to get to. Uh, to get to. Uh, uh, to the point where they can do an FTL jump. So unfortunately, trying to push the limit uh, ended up killing them. But yeah, that's how close the game got. Um, literally, they were a jump away from victory, um, and it got snatched away. Um, all because uh, out of all the eight locations I could have drawn, I drew the food, which was uh, pretty unlucky. What was even more unlucky is the fact I rolled, uh, all I needed to roll was a three, no sorry, five or lower, so I would have to roll, I had to roll four or higher. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that happened. So, um... Yeah, uh, so once the game is over, everyone reveals their cards. Everyone else is not a Cylon, so it's not a big deal. But uh, yeah, it was a pretty close call. Like I said, they all they had to do was last a few more rounds, and they could have maybe pulled through. Um, 
Well, um, I didn't get to really show off what Cylons can do during their turn. Um, the way Cylons work on their turns is they draw two cards on their turn, and they could be of any type, including Treachery. Doesn't have to match their card anymore. In fact, they don't really use any, they don't even use their character abilities anymore. Um, all they can do is they can move to the Cylon locations, which are right here. And there's also a location here, the Base Star Bridge, which uh, you can activate any two of the following abilities. There's four abilities here, so you can activate two of them. Um, and what the Cylon can do is a number of things. They can manipulate destinations, crisis. Um, they can activate uh, raiders and heavy raiders. Um, or or deploy them. Um, they can they can essentially pick. Two, they can draw two crisis cards and pick one and force them to resolve it. Uh, but those don't activate Cylon ships. Um, they can also play a super crisis if they have one. Um, they start out in the resurrection ship, which is a hazard area. So you, um, if you want to, you can hang around here and draw us a, a super crisis. But while you're in here, you can only draw one card instead of two. Um, the stuff you can do at the base star bridge ra range from forcing them to place civvy ships, um, place some uh, base stars or raiders in any one area of the game board. Um, you can uh, roll dice that automatically do damage to the Galactica based off the number of raiders. Um, you can also incre decrease the jump track or increase your pursuit track. Um, so yeah, the, the Cylon gets some other toys to play with. Um, but what really worked for them was the fact that, you know, Rosalind was president, and even though they knew she was a Cylon, um, they didn't really, they didn't, they didn't really stop her in time. Uh, they should have executed her probably sooner if they, you know, had any, you know, thoughts about it, but obviously I'm playing this all by myself, so head and rolls and all that, I was just kind of just going through the motions. Uh, but yeah, it was those food shortages um, where the president gets to choose what to do with the resources, she just depleted them of resources, which was funny because she actually gave them extra extra food originally because they had so much of it. And uh, we had like, what, over nine food and all of a sudden just all depleted at once. It was uh, pretty impressive. I mean, some of it was done by players. The, that one card that allowed everyone in action ate up a food. Um, so like I said, I hopefully you guys, you know, enjoyed it. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. Um, even though this game is definitely a lot better with people, like four or five people, uh, kind of running through the motions and stuff, it's kind of neat to kind of see what the game has to offer. Um, I got to use once per game abilities on everybody except for Chief. Chief's once per game get, uh, ability is very, very, it's depending on uh, skill checks. Um, and what you can do is you can essentially negate an entire color. So you can either negate a color that's been providing positive help or negative help. Um, yeah. I, this, I, overall, compared to my previous attempts, to, uh, previous recordings of this, I think this uh, worked out a lot better. I got to show off a lot of the mutineer card, mutiny cards, a lot of the, some of the uh, quorum cards. Uh, I didn't get to mess around with Capital One too much, but that's because Ros Rosalind's not really good for it. Uh, we did plenty of space combat. Um, we even did a little bit of Pegasus, not much. Uh, we kind of ignored it mostly. And uh, yeah. Um, Generally, things get a bit messy if you lose certain types of people. Um, if you lose people that can do repairs and stuff, um, you'll very quickly find yourself in a situation where just your ship just gets worn down through damage. Um, in this one, we literally everything was fully, everything was pristine. We had no damage on the. I mean, we had damage on the Pegasus, but that's about it. We had all of our ships up and running. We lost one Raptor. We used we saw a nuke left, but it doesn't matter when you starve to death. And that's kind of the neat thing about the game. Like, there's just so many things you have to keep track of as a human. And it, well, originally, like, if we were like a few, you know, episodes back, I mean, I would not have expected us to lose because of food. And I was more concerned about morale and you know, civvy ships and all that. And no matter what, it just you know, all of a sudden just sneaks up on you. So uh, enough rambling on my part. Uh, I will be doing one more playthrough, and I'll be introducing the Cylon leader uh, mechanics. Uh, in which case there'll be four players with one of them being a Cylon leader. Um, so hopefully you guys will get something out of that. If not, well, at least I got to play this game, even if it's by myself. So I am the Depressed Eeyore, and this was Battlestar Galactica on Tabletop Simulator. See you guys later.